Hello there. Hi. For today's video, I'm going to answer a question that I've been asked during my gallery show and a few times recently that I absolutely take no offense with. I know people are curious, I know people have opinions, and I'm all good with it. I'm not upset, basically, that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> basically, what people are asking is if I cheat my painting somehow, but not in the sense that they used to think. <laughs> I've already made an I'm not fake video, and that was basically explaining that the paintings themselves were actually real paint and not just like printed somehow, I don't know. There's like video evidence of me doing this stuff, so I'm a bit, okay, <laughs> it's fine. So the things that we'll discuss in this video is what really is cheating with art and what's not, and whether or not I personally do anything that people could perceive as cheating. One technique the artist will use is a grid system. And per se, this was just a photograph or something, which is a really dark photo, so it's going to go great. Draw lines down the artwork like this, more proportionally and with a ruler, so it's not all crooked and stuff. And you'd go across as well. So it's a very wonky grid. This is not a proper grid whatsoever. But they'll take a photograph, they'll put a square grid on top of it, then you would draw the same number of lines on your canvas, and then it kind of breaks down the painting whenever you're drawing it out. So you'd focus on drawing that section first, and then the next section, and line it up to the grid. It is an art technique. Typically, it's used by artists that are more starting out, I guess. I think I used it my first year of drawing classes in high school and that's the only time I've ever used it because I didn't like it. It's all fine and you can draw the image from it, but then you've got the grid lines and you have to erase the grid lines. I hated it. So it's not my preference, mainly because I enjoy drawing freehand. <laughs> Some people see grids as cheating. I don't see it as cheating, but I feel like I wouldn't like the piece as much if I had done it and I don't use tracing. I actually advise against tracing completely. <laughs> I don't really see a point in tracing because that's something that's helped me get better, I think, at proportions is not tracing. Tracing is one of those things where it doesn't help you. Nothing about tracing helps you. And I don't really get accused of that one anymore, to be fair. And part of the reason for that is I've started including in my videos snippets of me doing the sketch, if not the full sketch sped up. I kind of feel like I look like a professor today, which is appropriate because I am teaching you some things. Whoa. Uh, and I've said this so many times, some of you are probably sick of hearing it. That being said, I'm always getting new subscribers and new people asking me on my comments. When I do a painting, I always use a colored pencil to sketch out on the canvas first. The reason for this is graphite pencils bleed into the paint and colored pencils do not. And here is an example of what it looks like. So as you can see, the colored pencil you can paint right over it. It might take another layer or two, but with the graphite pencil it's going to take like seven layers and it's still going to show through a little bit. Also when I do a sketch, I don't do a full sketch because I'm going to be painting over it. I do think it's always helpful to draw a little bit of a sketch first because it just helps you get your bearings. But the gist of this is I don't use a grid. I don't trace it because it's a canvas, um, and I use it freehand. After people ask about whether or not I try to cheat with sketching somehow, normally the follow-up question is, do I use a reference photo? And the answer to this question has more layers. Uh, for one thing, I do a lot of different things. I paint from still life, like this avocado. <laughs> I do have an artist mannequin to help me with proportions and things. Uh, with the painting behind me, the slug, is imaginary. <laughs> and the flowers in the picture are based off flowers I found in my garden, uh, which leads me to the concept sketch. For any original painting that I've done, I have planned it out beforehand. It's not always fully planned out, but at least the basics of it will be planned out. Let's see if I can find one in here. Like, <laughs> like with my galactic light bulb painting, this is a print of it. The actual painting is massive. But well, let's just compare the concept sketch to the actual painting. My concept sketches are not always these magnificent, well-detailed out things. Normally they're bad. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was the start, and then here's the finish. Da da. Ah <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's how that started out. <laughs> I did these on Twitch actually. I'm going more back to Twitch. Uh, I'm not trying to use my posters as like a thing. All the paintings are actually in storage, and so here's some clips of what the paintings are actually. compare the concept sketch to the actual painting. So here we go, galactic fish painting, and here's my concept sketch. <laughs> Is it cheating? You decide. <laughs> um, 
feel like a child right now just like saying I guess after the initial concept sketch, uh, I would go out and do my research. For the fish, I went to an aquarium near me and I drew goldfish in my sketchbook. The staff looked at me a bit weird because it was the type of aquarium where you just go to buy fish. It's like a pet shop. Uh, most of the paintings from my gallery show this year and last year did not have a reference photo. They wouldn't really have a reference image because it's something that I'm creating. Uh, the image doesn't exist until I make it. I also don't like working directly, directly from a photograph all the time. The reason for this is because I like to make paintings and the photograph already exists, that image already exists, and I want to make something that is slightly different at least. Any animals I painted are actually from concept sketches that I've done when I've gone to the zoo uh, and I'm going to do a video up here soon where I show you the whole process of me like doing a little zoo trip, finding an animal, sketching it and making a painting. Uh, I'm really excited. <laughs> Additionally, anything that I've personally done on my channel that's based off a game or a film or a movie, normally it's actually sponsored content where Disney has reached out to me They've said, would you like to do this painting to promote this film, like Beauty and the Beast? I chat with them, I go over concept art with them, pick out what the painting's gonna look like together, and then I do the painting, and often when I've done it, companies ask for the paintings themselves. So currently, a lot of my Disney paintings I've done are actually in Disney UK's offices. Beauty and the Beast is there, Coco is there, uh, a Snow White piece I've done is there. There are several others, but I don't remember what they are. <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, so any artwork that I'm doing now that's character-based, normally they're actually official campaigns. <laughs> I didn't start out that way. I started out just doing fan art, but now I've gone beyond that, which is lovely. My concept drawing for my cat picture cracks me up. Concept, cat with a bulb on its head. Finished artwork. Uh, you might notice that his hair looks like toothpaste. That was not intentional. <laughs> I have someone ask me at my showcase as well what my style of artwork would be called. I'd say surrealism, <laughs> um, some kind of like fantasy with surrealism. It's something that looks familiar, but there's something off about it. <laughs> but basically what I wanted to let you guys know in this video uh, is that I don't feel like I cheat my paintings. I do draw from freehand. When it comes to artwork, I do think reference photos and using references and concept sketches are very important. And I do spend a lot of time and effort doing that research process. <laughs> Taking one of my art tip books here, which I highly recommend investing in if you're an artist, uh, to figure out how your favorite things were made. This one is from Kiki's Delivery Service. Front page, from the start, they let you know what the research images were. <laughs> and then they'll go off those images and those references and make their own original piece out of that. This is one of my favorite art books. I am constantly reading it. <laughs> and everything's so detailed and lovely. I, I just, sorry, this is my favorite book. <laughs> I'm gonna do a video soon of just like, artists that I follow that inspire me because they're what makes me want to do better. <laughs> I very much feel like I'm still just getting started out. I very much feel like I don't know everything, and I think that's a good place to be, honestly. And with art, you never stop. So, <laughs> hi there, so let's take a look at some of the paintings. This is my favorite painting. For the moon, I practiced techniques with dripping uh, glue on things to see how the glue dripped, uh, and that's how I got the dripping effect. This is an example of a piece done from memory. <laughs> These were based off breakfast that I had made one morning. The fish are based off the same aquarium fish that I had before. And the cupcake is based off a cupcake that I actually baked myself. These are cute as well. That's a little statue I got from Japan. Look at this, look at this. I got this for Tom as like a little like a uh, Sitsi thing. Like, congrats on doing Sitsi. I dropped this kettle on my leg. No, I have a really bad burn that I hope doesn't score. It's raining outside and I need to go post packages. No! Do you guys want to see my little Etsy shop I've got going? Da -da -da. I built a little rack to put all my prints in in the cupboard under the stairs. So this is like my Etsy shop. <laughs> I'm so happy with it. Hey cat, get out of the shop. Yeah, I know you want to be there. I'm proud. Hey, you doing all right? Oh uh, yes, so that is how I work and I hope you have a lovely, lovely day. Bye, 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 bye.